ThingLink 360's photo editor allows you to create interactive, immersive clue rooms for your digital breakout activities. I'm using the Educator Premium version of ThingLink, which currently runs about $35 a year. There are a variety of phone apps that will allow you to capture 360 images, but I love using Flickr's 360 photo group. I search the shared photos and then filter for those tagged for Creative Commons use. Some of the items in this group are really panoramic photos rather than 360 images. So if this panning 360 viewer doesn't load when you click on a picture, just choose a different one. Once you find a picture that you want to use for your clue room, download it to your computer. The large dimensions should be more than enough for what I need. Once saved, head over to ThingLink. After you've logged in, use the Create button to get started. If you've not upgraded your account, there will be an option to do so next to Upload 360, which is the option you want to choose. Once you've uploaded your image, you can begin adding your clues or tags. Ideally, have these prepared ahead of time. First, I want to add a link to this online Morse code translator that my users will need to solve one of my clues. I'll pan around my room and decide where I want the clue to be located, and then click the Add Tag button. If it's not quite where you wanted, you can easily reposition it later. My options for tags include images, videos, and embedded items. The Tour tab lets you create links or transitions to other 360 scenes which gives you the option to essentially have more than one room or location for your digital breakout. I'm not seeing an option to add a hyperlink, so one option is to upload an image that represents Morse code, and then you can paste the URL in the description box. But I have to say, this isn't very easy to see, and it's not going to be a clickable link for my users. So instead, I like to use Google Slides to create a one-slide digital poster that has a clickable link on it. This link will take my user to the website, and then of course I put the picture on it to make it easy to understand what it's for. ThingLink supports embedded Google Slides, so now I just need to get the embed code for this presentation. First, make sure it is shared so that anyone with the link can view it. Otherwise, click Get Shareable Link to change the permissions. Then close the sharing permissions and visit the File menu and select Publish to the Web. Visit the Embed tab and copy the code provided. Then head back to ThingLink. I will change this from an image tag to an embed tag, and I'll paste that code in. I definitely like the look of this much better, and this link will work when my users click on it. I'll save my tag and then reposition it in the room. ThingLink is using that original image I uploaded as the icon for the clue tag, but you can choose to edit the tag, select the Choose an Icon option, and change the icon to any of these preloaded options or something else that you upload. For links, I pretty much always embed a one-slide Google slide with an image and any hyperlinks needed, and this seems to work for the majority of my clues. If you want to add a new clue, click the Add Tag option again. This time, I will add a YouTube video. Even though there is a video tab here, you will only use that option if you have a video file on your computer to upload. For YouTube, use the Embed tab. To find the embed code for a YouTube video, click the Share option beneath the video, and then the Embed tab. I prefer to use the Show More option so I can uncheck things I don't like, like having suggested videos play at the end. Once you have your preferences set, copy the embed code, Go back to your ThingLink tag and paste the code on the Embed tab. Since this is a video, I'll customize the icon to better represent that. If you do have your own video that you want to upload, create a tag and use the Video tab. Browse to your video's location on your computer and add a description if you want. Know that videos begin to play as soon as the user clicks the icon, unlike YouTube videos which require a manual start. 
To link your ThingLink360 to another ThingLink360, just visit that other ThingLink360 and use its share icon to get its link. Add a new tag and use the Tour tab to paste that link in. Again, I will customize my icon. Periodically save your thing link, which also delivers you into preview mode. Choose View 360 to see how your clues are looking. A transition from one thing link 360 to another looks like this, which gives a cool aspect of transporting locations or moving from room to room. Click back and then the edit pencil if you want to add more or revise any of your tags. When you're all done, click the share icon to get the full screen link for your thing link 360. This could be linked to a discussion, web page, or anywhere else in your breakout. And if you want to embed your breakout, click the embed tab. I definitely like to enable autoplay here. Adjust the rest of your settings and then copy the embed code provided. Head over to wherever you want to embed the item, in my case, Schoology. I will create a new page. Toggle to the HTML editor. And paste in my code. Save your changes and preview. Participants can now interact with your clue room right within Schoology or wherever you have elected to embed your interactive room. The 360 room can be expanded to full screen and looks fantastic. ThingLink 360 makes it super easy to craft an amazing virtual room to enhance your digital breakouts.